Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 7, Part 2. Um, I decided to continue and do uh, another part of this lecture. Uh, that is a Part 3. After this, you will have another part. Uh, because mainly I wanted to focus on uh, in, in this part about and explain a little bit more about the fundamental matrix and the essential matrix because it was it is not so clear sometimes and uh, these mathematical concepts can be a bit di difficult to grasp so I will also go through the geometric derivation of the fundamental matrix and then uh, in this part I will also explain uh, eight point algorithm how to compute the fundamental matrix and some uh, um, optimization of uh, eight point algorithm as well and in the next th uh, and the last part of this series and uh, that is the third part we are going to talk about um, uh, ransack and hue transforms some iterative optimization techniques to find um, um, to parameter uh, parameterized uh, form of uh, you know, finding in layers and uh, uh, fitting algorithms basically okay so in this uh, let's let's revisit the fundamental matrix uh, let's reconstruct our original uh, setup in the left uh, there is one image plane on the right there is another image plane and we assume uh, a random uh, plane pi in the real world where there lies a point capital X um, and its corresponding small x uh, in, in the left image is presented here on the right is x prime we say that for every x uh, when it gets transformed to the other image uh, there exists an x prime and uh, or there exist such points uh, such pair of points for every x uh, that lies in this image plane okay and so we can say that they are uh, and there is that there is a homography h uh, pi which can map every x to x prime on the other uh, image using the uh, epipolar geometry okay epipolar geometry and its uh, epipolar constraints uh, we will see how it is uh, we can write uh, and so because we know these pair of points uh, exist um, uh, we can say that these points are projective points and uh, they can be represented as uh, x prime equals to uh, uh, applying a homography of h pi to all the points in x um, in order to construct the uh, epipolar line L prime that passes through x prime um, we can consider uh, this case so in uh, L prime can be written as e prime uh, as a cross, cross product of the epipole e prime and uh, x prime so we know x we know how to calculate x prime from that using the homography and we also know that e prime is the uh, projection of uh, the other camera uh, center right so when we take the cross product of this we get the epipolar line l prime that passes through x prime uh, for uh, simplicity and uh, conform uh, coming back to uh, representing these cross products in metric matrices we represent um, this cross product as e prime in the matrix form uh, as a dot pro and, and the dot product uh, with x prime uh, we also know that uh, x prime and x are homography uh, can be converted from uh, can be recovered from homography um, we write x prime we can write x prime as h uh, pi uh, of x and similarly for x we can write uh, we can construct the epipolar line l as the epipolar um, epipole matrix in, in this form uh, with uh, uh, vector product with uh, h pi and uh, x prime uh, in simplistic terms we can say that the f matrix or the fundamental matrix that transforms one um, uh, point to the uh, epipolar uh, to the other epipolar line can be written in this form so what is a fundamental matrix here we can see that uh, it basically transforms every point in one plane uh, or one image plane to epi uh, to its corresponding epipolar line in the other image and this is very strong and very useful um, uh, transformation we have already seen in the previous uh, part of the lecture how calibrated and uncalibrated cases can be used um, uh, can be can can be solved using this uh, epipolar constraint and this is very um, it's, it's it's very beautiful relationship uh, it's very geometric it's very grounded in uh, in analysis 
and so it's easier to implement implement also uh, we will see in the next slides how how to implement that as well anyways um uh, so we know f right and um uh, when we apply a transformation uh, f matrix to x prime and um uh, and then uh, an x transform to f it's a zero so this is um this is a basic uh, relationship of uh, uh, direct relationship between the fundamental matrix and the points in image planes of the two different uh, images right so here we see that there is no uh, homography here or there is no intrinsic or extrinsic parameters mentioned here and therefore it's a very basic uh, uh, rule or the very basic uh, transformation that uh, associates one point in one image plane to uh, a line in another image plane uh, why is this zero uh, it's easy to see again uh, when you apply a uh, fundamental matrix to uh, x prime for example it uh, generates an epipolar line right and this epipolar line when con uh, when um, an x transpose is um, is is a vector which is perpendicular to x and uh, L prime uh, L L uh, epipolar line L, which can be generated from X uh, F into X prime, is um, lies in the same plane as the epipolar plane, right? And uh, X transpose is perpendicular to that plane, and therefore the dot product will be zero, always, always zero. This is always the case. Uh, X prime and X transpose can be interchangeably used. For example, if you use X here, here you have to write X prime of uh, transpose so um, notations are important but you always have to think in terms of uh, two images or multiple images that you are using uh, one set of points from uh, one image and when applying uh, fundamental matrix and then you can get the corresponding epipolar line of that point in another image plane and when you do the dot product with the um, with a with a vector which is perpendicular to the co uh, plane of the uh, epipoles it will give you a zero and therefore this is a very basic relationship similarly uh, f can be written in terms of uh, essential matrix and k are the k and k prime are the intrinsic camera parameters uh, of both the cameras associated here so you can see here that um, uh, it's easy to reconstruct also um, uh, f, uh, fundamental matrix if we know the intrinsic parameters uh, of the camera as well as the extrinsic um, transformation or the calibration matrix for the for the cameras so uh, in a sense f is a representation of a combination of intrinsic and extrinsic uh, parameters without exclusively uh, mentioning them right uh, a more detailed and more thorough explanation of this uh, relationship can be found in on this very nice um, small pdf uh, it is taken directly from the hartley and zizerman book so if you are referring to that book it is uh, it is it is uh, given in much more detail okay uh, this is just a slide we are just repeating um, now we can keep things in our mind uh, some fixed details some fixed facts f is a three cross three matrix it's a rank two uh, matrix one column is a linear combination of the other two which we know and therefore the rank two uh, it can be determined uh, up to a scale so we know one of the values is a scale parameter and it has seven degrees of freedom right uh, a is scalar and can normalize up basically so given x projected from x capital x in one image f constrains the projection of x prime into image 2 to an epipolar line this is the basic fundamental uh, theorem of this uh, epipolar geometry okay so we move on now to estimating the fundamental matrix now you can think of uh, uh, estimating fundamental matrix if you have some set of points in one image plane and set of points in another image plane and you know already know the correspondences which point uh, is associated with which point then it's a simple straightforward application of a least squares uh, algorithm you can uh, uh, model this relationship into um, into an equation form of ax equals to zero and then apply svd on eight equation pairs to uh, solve those correspondences um, 
another important thing here is that we have to enforce the determinant of f equals to 0 constraint using SVD on f. So what does this mean determinant of f equals to 0? We already discussed in the previous slide that f is a uh, rank 2 matrix and it is a size 3 cross 3 square matrix. Uh, any square matrix which, uh, which has a rank lower than its uh, uh, size is uh, a singular matrix. What does it mean? It means that its determinant is 0. It also means that one of its column is a dependent or um, is codependent on uh, other column or row of uh, uh, or rows are interdependent somehow. So if this happens then usually the matrix is a degenerate matrix or uh, it, it can it, or a singular matrix and it can it can be decomposed its determinant will value will be 0 and we can enforce this constraint on the, the, this least square solution that we find via SVD um, uh, to get rid of noise. Um, how? We will see in the next slide. But before that, uh, please note that estimation of f or e for that matter is degenerate for a planar scene. Think about it for a while. Why is this the case? In a planar scene, there is one plane only. It is. It will be very difficult to find f because uh, there are a lot of different uh, possibilities of f and e, right? And therefore, it's a, a degenerate solution. There are a lot of solution and therefore it, there is it is difficult or almost impossible impractical to pick one of those solution okay and now we see the practical implementation of the eight point algorithm basically we have um, uh, so we have to solve a set of homogeneous uh, linear equations we write the systems of equations in this form in the using f11 and f, uh, up to f33 uh, in a matrix representation can be written it in, in this manner uh, equals to 0 as a f equals to 0 why n here is that um, we can so a minimum uh, we can have n number of points in both the images that have these correspondences and therefore we can have as many uh, linear equations and therefore we can write all those uh, points here and in a, in, and in compact form it can be written as a f equals to 0 now we have to solve for f basically right and we have seen this how we solve this uh, for for f using SVD in MATLAB it's a say, straightforward implementation and you have already done this uh, um, exercise in uh, uh, sorry you have already done this in the exercise 2 this step uh, so now you have a better clarity on why we are doing the singular value decomposition so if you do the singular value decomposition of a you take the last column of uh, column of uh, matrix V which is the um, which shows the uh, the different dimensions the uh, points have been projected onto right uh, but we already know that f uh, and so the so usually we will have um, uh, we take the last column and we have to take only the nine last uh, the first nine uh, entries of f but there is an issue here let's say we have because we have the fundamental matrix of rank 2 if we don't enforce the singularity constraint what will happen is uh, we will be able to reproject using f a lot of points uh, onto the another image plane constructing different epipolar lines and instead of getting a point we will get a region and this is quite noisy so uh, however we know that epipolar lines are all coincident so they pass through a single point all of them uh, on the right we see the corrected version of this when we use the singular singularity constraint of uh, determinant f equals to 0. What we do here essentially is we follow the same procedure but we resolve d determinant of f equals to 0 that is the constraint using SVD what we do is we just set the last singular value to be 0 and therefore we reconstruct f using u and s and v and then when we use f to reconstruct the um, uh, epipolar lines it will always pass through uh, a single point sometimes the last value uh, could be uh, near to zero or some other value but uh, because those that is because of the noise where does the noise comes from uh, due to the point correspondences um, it is possible that those point correspondences were not uh, ideal or they were off by some pixel values or some uh, occlusion happened and you were uh, and it miss uh, corresponded those associations 
and and therefore when we use this uh, technique of uh, solving it through set of linear equations uh, we enforce this sing last singular value or the ninth singular value to be zero and therefore we enforce the f matrix to be uh, singular and when we uh, reconstruct the epipolar lines they will always pass through uh, a single point they will always be coincident uh, there is another uh, problem with the eight point algorithm as you can see that uh, sometimes when the image sizes are too large uh, the values are not constrained there is a large variety or range of values uh, in this matrix uh, however this can be fixed by a simple scaling of the data uh, Hartley um, William Hartley wrote a nice paper about uh, uh, this point uh, this eight-point algorithm uh, which is called in defense of eight-point algorithm uh, so uh, yeah it is it was uh, published in 95 and it is called the normalized eight point algorithm. What we do essentially is uh, center the image data at the origin and scale it to the mean square distance between origin and the data point is, uh, is such that it is two pixel. Uh, and then we use the same procedure as before using the eight point algorithm to compute F from the normalized points and then enforce the rank to constraint on the matrix F and then recreate re the uh, generate f and throw out the smallest uh, singular value by uh, um, and then we uh, get the uh, rank to uh, constraint uh, and then we transform the fundamental matrix back to its original units because in the beginning we uh, normalize the uh, coordinates and now we will just transform it back uh, to its original uh, coordinates using this uh, equation and it works well it is it is uh, it, it was able to solve um, the normalization issue uh, being presented uh, very prevalent in the uh, computation of um, the fundamental metrics so uh, the eight point algorithm is still um, uh, the gold standard algorithm uh, where you use um, to get the you use it to get the initial value of f and then you use f to solve for p and p p dash p prime p prime and p para, uh, sorry <laughs> p and p prime are just the projection of x onto uh, x and uh, capital x to uh, small prime and uh, when we when you use this we joint we can jointly solve for 3d points uh, x and f that minimize the squared reprojection error so what we do is essentially after computing f uh, f we uh, we reproject those uh, points in one plane to the other using this uh, reprojection matrix F and uh, try to uh, compare the uh, algorithms performances okay uh, so the basic eight point algorithm performance so when we try to reproject the point back using this um, F matrix that we constructed from the uh, algorithms the distance between the um, reprojected point and the original point is mentioned here. So, using eight-point algorithm, the average distances is where um, uh, around two two pixels. Uh, when enforced uh, using the normalized eight-point algorithm, uh, the distance is reduced drastically to almost uh, less than one uh, pixel. And when we use some nonlinear least squares uh, approx um, constraints, it reduced a little bit more to 0.8. Uh, pixel values. Uh, the best uh, way to uh, evaluate these algorithms is uh, through reprojection errors and this is how uh, those reprojection errors were um, uh, calculated and uh, this shows the performance uh, of different algorithms here. So how can we go from people are geometry to camera calibration? If we know the cal calibration matrices of two cameras basically we can estimate the essential metrics right uh, we know the f we know the uh, calibration matrices of two um, cameras and then we can uh, estimate the essential metrics essential metrics basically gives us the relationship between the uh, rotation and the translation between the cameras or you can say the extrinsic parameters of the cameras can be estimated using the es uh, essential metrics and um, fundamental matrix lets us compute the relationship of up to up to a scale so when we saw uh, so fundamental matrix works with uh, image points which are uh, uh, converted into homogeneous image coordinates and therefore we can always 
uh, find this scales also in the fundamental matrix uh, without uh, with unknown intrinsic calibration so we even if we don't know the intrinsic calibration of the camera we can still find the relationship between the points uh, and therefore um, fundamental matrix is called is, uh, is called like kind of a weak calibration matrix uh, and uh, an essential matrix is more like a strong calibration because E focuses more on the intrinsic and extrinsic camera parameters whereas uh, F is not exactly focusing on that. Um, this is a very good uh, fundamental matrix song. It shows the every step and all the constraints and all the uh, rules of uh, epipolar geometry and it's very popular it's around three minutes song i'm not including that song in this video i however encourage you to go use this uh, link and watch it online uh, it's very nice it explains um, the lyrics are mentioned there it explains every point every step of the lyrics uh, so every step of the lyrics explains um, some part of the fundamental matrix how it how it uh, you, uh, how epipolar constraints are formed, what are epipoles, what are null spaces for f, how uh, x and x prime are connected with f and they uh, form a degenerate, uh, sorry, they form um, uh, epipolar uh, geometry and things like that. And uh, it's quite nice. Uh, I highly recommend you to watch that. Okay, and now we come back to the, we end this um, presentation. Uh, this part of this lecture uh, in the third part we will look into uh, some hue transforms as well as uh, Ransack algorithm which are which is essential for your exercise 3 as well as was for exercise 2 uh, since you have already finished exercise 2 you will be it will be easier for you to see how these things work and why these things work specifically okay thank you until next time